Hey everyone, welcome to the channel. All things Middle Earth here with a video looking at the Commander Agzok. <laughs> So we're going to go ahead and jump right in and look at Agzok's kit. First, I want to show you just a general overview of his stats and uh, different abilities he has. Then we'll talk about skills, what you should be going into, followed by gear and the troops that I did in my testing. So uh, he's got the warrior perk to start out with, which is going to give him an extra 25 might. He's going to get two extra skill points, and he's going to deal an extra 10% physical damage, which is going to pair pretty nicely with the skills we're going to run with him. As for his actual stats, Agzok is definitely a might-heavy commander. His might is at 2.0 per level. So right now, for reference, mine at level 49. With decent gear, he's sitting uh, just over 300 might. And then the focus is almost half a point per level at 0.55. And the speed is just below one per level at 0.83. For Agzok, the most ideal build I've found for him is going to be at Respect 3, which is pretty good news for him because as a Tier 1 commander, it's going to be relatively achievable if you're just starting out. Getting him to R3 is not going to be too big of a deal. Uh, but I'll have this uh, on the spreadsheet, so I'll put the picture on the screen so you know what that looks like. But I've got the spreadsheet linked down below, so if you want to follow along or reference, uh, more of a quick reference for, for what I'm talking about, that's going to be linked down below. Uh, but we're going to start out by going into his R3 first, actually going into Shadow of the Mist, which is going to have Rush. So this is going to activate immediately after the battle begins, and it is against one enemy unit. Each round, it's going to deal 180% physical damage continuously. Uh, and the max level effect here is going to be that the duration extends for three rounds instead of two rounds. So it's going to extend for three rounds after you do this. So kind of a bleed type of effect there with the three round cooldown. Followed by laceration. This is going to be each round against one enemy target. It's going to inflict bleeding, causing a target to suffer 260% physical damage continuous for three rounds. So how these work together is you have Shadow of the Mist, which is going to hit first right away. In the, fir in the first round, you're going to have Rush. So it, it gets used right away. And then basically for the first three rounds, uh, set round two and round three, uh, he's going to have the effect from Shadow of the Mist hit and deal its chunk of damage. And then Laceration is going to kick in on round four and do that. And so it kind of is that it starts out with the bleed and then ramps up to the Laceration, which is going to be a little bit higher damage at the 260 compared to the 180. Next, you're going to go into Weapons Expertise, which is going to give Agzok a 50% chance of gaining 50% damage, which is very nice. It's a pretty high percentage. It's obvious. It's just a coin flip, obviously, with a 50%. But the cool thing about how uh, how the weapons expertise works is that it can affect the Shadow of the Mist or Laceration when it is initially triggered. And if you do get it to trigger, uh, then you're going to get that effect for all of the subsequent uh, bleeds or the, the continuous damage. So uh, it's really good when you do hit it because if you hit it on Laceration, for example, an extra 50%, um, it, it can get very, very nice on the Laceration or, or, or both of them. But the downside, obviously, is if you don't hit, then you're not getting it for any of them. So uh, there are fights I've had where it's hit every time, and it seemed like those went a little bit better. And there are times where they did not hit, and that's uh, that's kind of a bummer. So that is the R3 for him there. Uh, some very interesting abilities that have a lot of potential. And then we're going to go into the R1 into Pursuer, which is going to give him 20% damage while attacking. And the max level effect here is that his damage bonuses are um, modified by his speed. So keep that in mind, because we're going to talk about that a little bit later. But that's 20% extra damage, so that's just going to stack on top of everything else going on. Then he's got two big hits here with Deep and Wounds. This is going to be against one enemy target. He's going to deal 300% physical damage. And the next damage received is going to be an extra 21% damage modified by the Might stat. So uh, the next one is going to be Overwhelm. If you can see both of these here, Overwhelm and Deep and Wounds have a two-round cooldown, which means they, they're going to start on round three. Uh, you, want to, you want to put your points into Deep and Wounds first. Because this extra 21% will then affect Overwhelm as opposed to the other way around. If it does Overwhelm first, uh, you're not going to get the extra damage on Deep and Wounds. So you want to go into Deep and Wounds first, followed by Overwhelm, which is just another big hit. 200% physical damage and an additional 300% physical damage after one round. So that is that. And then lastly for this build, to top it all off, I like to go two points into Black Numenorian with one point into Black Arts. This is going to uh, do an anti, uh, anti HP recovery. So against two enemy targets, you're going to deal a small amount of focus damage modified by the focus stat. We're not worried about that. We are looking at the uh, cannot recover HP for one round. So you only need the two points there and the one point to go get that right there. So uh, again, for reference to get this point, I had, I had one extra point to go into Black Numenorian. You could honestly start going into Dark Mantle without extra points if you have him higher respect. Uh, which would, wouldn't hurt you at all. So um, this build here for reference is my Agzok, which is at level 49. 
with imparted wisdom. So, and he's at respect seven. So he's he's decently respect. He's, it's not crazy, you know, well over ten or anything. But I have imparted wisdom on him. Uh, so just bear that in mind. You know, I'm going to get one more point from levels, and then th- that's just kind of where he's going to be sitting. So. Uh, again, you can make that decision yourself if you think he's someone you want to impart wisdom to. If you're just starting out, I probably wouldn't say Agzok is one you'd want to start with. But if he is one of your better commanders, uh, he, it's not bad. Um, but again, you can definitely get this if you get his respect just a little bit higher to make sure you can get all these points here. Uh, that kind of completes the build for him. All right, lastly, I want to look at the gear I have on him and the suggested gear for for all of you. And then we're going to look at some battle reports. I was able to do some really good testing so shout out to Drusifer for helping me with some testing on Agzok here. But for the hand piece, I'm going to suggest the Axe of Kaza Doom with Cleave. I'll put a picture of that on the screen. I don't have one of those on this account here. Uh, but again, we're going to primarily focus on might or speed or both, um, ideally for him, because there were a few effects and skills that we're going into that either are modified by speed or uh, one of its big hits are modified by might. The unfortunate thing about Agzok is he doesn't have a lot of either one of them to like really justify pushing the other. But his might per level is so much better. So it's really it's it's not gonna hurt him to go into that and just increase the physical damage that he's doing. So the Axe of Cause of Doom is completely might focused, and the cleave is gonna give him a chance to deal some extra physical damage. So that's pretty good. Uh the next one, which I do actually have on him, is going to be the Berserker's Raiment here. Uh with concentration. So each round the commander is going to get extra might up to five stacks. So a little bit more pricey on the gear here. Again, you could just go with whatever high might gear you have, or if you have something with might and speed, that'd be fine. Um, I believe there's a scale male that has gallant. That's just an extra might bonus for him. So something like that would be solid just to get that might up a little bit higher. Uh, but if you have the concentration, um, even on a different piece, it's pretty good. If you do end up getting it refined up, if you're a little bit more of a spender and have one of these, uh, then that might's going to stack pretty significantly. Uh, but at three refinement at three gold stars, I've got it at eight per level. So it does get going as the, uh, as the, as the battle goes on. Now the next one I'm going to suggest for him is going to be a cask of the submerged isle. This is going to give him might, focus, and speed. A little bit more priority on the might and focus. Uh, as you can see this one here is strengthen three times, refined once. I have last resort on mine which is fine but I think formation break is going to be a better effect for him because it's basically going to give you the opposite where in the earlier rounds he's going to do extra damage against melee units I believe. So I do prefer that uh, but again, if you have last resort, that's not bad. There are a few different items that have last resort or formation formation break. Again, all being gold here. So uh, that is going to be the suggestion for the headpiece. And then the fiddle of the eldest is is going to be the recommendation for him. You've got focus, you've got speed, you have army defense and speed. And then heroism is going to be the uh, preferred effect here, which is going to give the commander um, extra damage, and the allied units are going to deal less damage. So this isn't refined at all for me. Uh, but if you were able to have a couple of fiddles and get this going. Again, you start seeing how these things, you know, if you if you have formation break and he deals extra damage in the early rounds with that, if you have uh, concentration and he gets extra might every round for that, if you have he- uh, heroism and he deals extra damage uh, with that, you can see how this would start scaling up more and more and more. Uh, but obviously, it does get kind of pricey because these are all gold gear that I have suggested for him. But again, if you've got purple or blue gear, uh, just throw might on him. Um, if it's got speed and might, I think you're going to do just fine. There are still some solid effects, even at the blue and the, um, the purple tiers that I think are, are very solid. And as long as you're looking at the effects and just using the ones that have some kind of positive effect on Agzok himself, because he is a damage dealing commander. So you want to make sure that you're just increasing what he's doing for you in battle. Now onto the exciting part, we get to look at some reports here. I was able to do about, I think, six different battles with some different commanders and even trying some different skills with Agzok to find the best case scenario. So I want to go through those and talk about my thoughts here. So this is one of the first ones we did. This was against a level 50 Arrowin. Uh, here's the build here for this one. So a uh, solid build on the skills and then gear is, is it's by no means whale gear. It's not like just, you know, no gear, but uh, it's not very strengthened and upgraded, uh, at least compared to my Agzok having mostly gold or purple and at least having some pretty strength and stuff. So the gear advantage is definitely on Agzok here. And as you can see in this one, we definitely took the win, uh, but it was pretty close. I'll show you the damage we did commander wise. Uh, commander damage for Agzok was 209,000 here. Now uh, the total damage that we had on our win was 272,000. So not a bad report here, but one thing we got to keep in mind, and I mentioned this a lot in my Mumakill counter video, was just the the resources that you're trading. So I do think this was a solid one for us. Other than losing all the trolls, we did okay. But you do have to look through as you're going through. And if I was to run this with all Mumakill and lose a significant amount, 
uh, it may not have been a win, even if I took out more of their troops. So you have to constantly be thinking, you know, how much did my my army cost uh, for, for myself? I can see these are my losses for this army. I could go into my barracks and say, okay, for, for 1,148 trolls, what does that cost resource-wise and time-wise uh, compared to the Arwen, what the losses were for that one, which does take a little bit of work. But um, sometimes if you're trying to figure out, you know, if you really did get a win, uh, it's good to reference that. So I do think overall Agsok took the win here, but not not by a crazy amount. And I, I this is one of the better case ones. So uh, we'll, we'll just continue on to the next one here. This is one up against a very nice Theoden. Again, this is kind of a, a little bit uh, more heavily geared Theoden. This is the build that was run, uh, which has the renewed as opposed to being maxed out in a red leader. Um, the reason for this being uh, when fighting evil, you know, wanting the debuff removal more than um, the HP recovery. So uh, he was running that that debuff removal. And as you can see, there are a number of reasons, but Agzok got ax absolutely smashed here. Um, he dealt 75,000 commander damage at just over 100,000 total for Theoden, but obviously Theoden's troops put out almost three times that, and they did it pretty quickly, so Agzok's not able to get going. So uh, it seems like Agzok is going to really struggle against mounted commanders like Theoden, like Eowyn, where they are going to get out first, they're going to be fast, they're going to immediately start taking on your troops and allow Agzok to do less and less damage. Uh, the other thing that Agzok really is going to struggle with is going to be any commanders that have debuff removal. So in this instance, he had some Bree Riders, which are going to have the Steady Will perk, which is giving them each round a 100% chance to cure a negative status effect, as well as the Renewed um, having a 100% chance to remove one random debuff. So you'll see in the report for this one, actually, when Shadow of the Mist proc it did hit on the Bree Rider, I believe. So right here you can see Agzok activates Shadow of the Mist. He actually got the weapon expertise on it, so that means all of the continuous bleeds for Shadow of the Mist are going to have extra damage, which is great. Uh, it did hit the Bree Rider here, which is not the best situation because as you're going to see in a minute, the Bree Rider is just going to uh, cleanse this off. And right here, you can see the Bree Rider was cured by Bree Rider's Steady Will. So normally, uh, again, this is the first round up here where he activates Shadow of the Mist right here. Normally in rounds two and three, you'd see that Shadow of the Mist hit with Agzok and then it moved to Laceration. Uh, but that did unfortunately not happen here because it got cured. So that already really lowered the amount of damage that Agzok was going to do. And like I said, as you can see here, this is round four. Agzok is going to activate Laceration. So again, in theory, in round one, he hits Shadow of the Mist. Round two and three, he has the bleed effect from Shadow of the Mist. Then round four, he hits Laceration. Uh, and they kind of just keep going like that. So in this one, he did hit Laceration, uh, but it did not uh, get the weapon expertise. This one hit the Swan Knight, and I do believe this hit every time. But if you don't hit the weapon expertise, uh, it ends up that the Laceration does less than a Shadow of Mist that would have had it. So uh, again, I think the rest of the battle went fine. There were no major things with the, uh, you know, again, he's trying to activate Shadow of the Mist again, but it won't because he already has a stronger physical damage continuous effect in play. Um, but as you can see here, the Laceration causes 6,768 physical damage. Uh, it seems like in my uh, in my case, when he did have the Shadow of the Mist with the weapon expertise, it was causing closer to 11,000 or 12,000. So uh, again, still a good chunk. And if you can keep these going, it can be it can be good. Now, I honestly don't think this would have made a huge difference. Even if he hit Shadow of the Mist, it may have just helped us take out a little bit more. Uh, but again, this one was was over very, very quickly for Agsuck. So it seems like he's really going to struggle against cleanses and he's going to really struggle against mounted commanders moving on the next battle we have to look at is a gimli this one i was very interested in seeing because they're both just damage dealing commanders and we had pretty good damage here as you can see the commander damage being just under 200 compared to the 240 the soldier damage was pretty similar to both of them uh, but again gimli just had the edge and was able to get going a little bit more so the total damage received was closer to 300 for agzok as opposed to 240 and the thing you have to look at here with the Guardians being so cheap, even though this was a solid fight, we lost our entire army. Uh, we far and away used and lost more resources in this battle. Uh, so the difference here be was just that I really think this is the Gimli build for reference. I really think the Gimli just was able to out, out damage Agzok. So when you have two damage dealing commanders going, there are a few effects that can decide what would happen. 
Um, again, if we look at the report, he did get Shadow of the Mist with weapon expertise, so that was a good start there for him. However, on the laceration on round four, it did not trigger, so he wasn't getting like the most damage. Uh, but it wasn't a terrible fight for him. I don't know if there was a whole lot of other things that could have happened to change this. I just think Emily just outdid him here. So uh, when you're going up against commanders that are also dealing damage themselves, uh, just who it's going to be kind of like hit or miss. Whoever's going to get it's going to get it, and you're going to see another closer one in a second. Uh, but in this situation. Um, we had the Gimli taking the win. Here was the situation I wanted to test out with a Gandalf because Gandalf is one of the most popular commanders. This one did not end in a failure, thankfully, for Axok, but it was very, very close. Uh, this We had the same comp here. I had a little bit more trolls and less crushers. I was trying to just um, use whatever troops I had here. Uh, but again, as you can see here, while it did go the 10 rounds, uh, Axok still hitting under that 200k damage and just being outdone by Gandalf. Um, so again, not, not a whole lot to say here. We can go through the reports and you can look and see where laceration hits and where shadow of the mist hits. And if there were any cleanse effects, um, if you did get the weapon expertise, but at the end of the day, um, you need really, really the best case scenario for, to, for things to go, uh, perfectly for him. So it definitely took the loss here with the amount of losses we had, as well as just in general took the loss. This was another interesting one. We tested on the Arwen again, and this one was a, a basically the same Arwen. There's a, there's a slight difference instead of, we have Eagles here instead of cataphracts. Uh, but the difference here for Agsok, just for your reference, was that I went into the Mountain Warrior uh, because I did have some questions about Agsok and about whether or not you should go into his like huge range damage because he has Mountain Warrior at R5, which is extra damage to range. Then he has Seeker, which is extra damage to range. Then he has Heart Seeker, which is uh, for the lowest HP, which is usually ranged, um, paired with Pursuer. So on the attack, he just does really big damage to ranged. But as you can see here, while this again went fine, uh, this wasn't this wasn't horrible. At 200 commander damage. Um, I think we probably took the win here, resources wise. I'd have to calculate and see, but I think we did probably take the like resource win here. Uh, as you can see, we did 200 damage here. This is again with that R5 build anti range with a pretty heavy ranged army uh, compared to this one right here, where uh, this is again very similar army with two different range types, about 50 command of range troops. This is just the R3 build. Uh, as you can see here, Agzok did 209. So he actually did more damage without his like huge ranged build. Now, maybe if there's a situation where it's 100% ranged, you could get that number up more. Uh, but the point that I wanted to make was that against the, an army that you knew was going to be ranged, you're really not going to see that much of an improvement if you go into the R5. So that, that, again, that's why the R3 is suggested. But that's that one there. And then two more here. This one was very interesting. Again, we definitely took the resource loss here, uh, but this Legolas and this Agzok, again, both damage dealing commanders, uh, did almost identical damage. You have uh, Agzok doing just 20,000 more commander damage, and you have the soldier damage, uh, just 2,000 more to, to my troops here. But the huge, huge difference here is that we have a full stack of guardians versus I even had some fallen in here because I had troops to use up. We had some trolls, we had some crushers. So the army expenses were way more for Agzok. So uh, not only was this basically a tie and ended in a draw, uh, Agzok definitely took the, the loss here on a not crazy geared Legolas either, you know, for reference here, this is it. We got some blue gear on him, uh, one piece of gold and, uh, some hip lane, the purple it's strengthened twice. So again, we, we've kind of had the gear advantage on almost everyone. So we're, we, we ourselves should be getting our best case scenario. Uh, but as you can see with Agzok, uh, it wasn't able to get it doing here now, uh, in an, in a non role play server setting. Uh, if there was a unit like the uh, like the Guardian who is just really affordable that can be used in single stacks, it will be interesting to see what Agzok can do. Uh, so I'm, I'll be eager to test that out at a future date. Uh, but for now, this is what he's looking like against that. And then lastly, we want to test against one other uh, mounted commander. So this was an Eowyn, uh, and it's very reminiscent of the Theoden fight. Again, uh, we just received over 300,000 damage. This went pretty quickly. I think we did a little bit more ourselves. Uh, yeah, we did just over 100,000 damage. Uh, compared to we did 76,000 damage against the Theoden. So uh, I do think the Theoden was built just a, a, it was a little bit more of a whale Theoden than the Eowyn. Um, and again, I, there were some cleanses that hit. But again, we still got the same Bree Riders here. And uh, this is just kind of showcasing my point that, again, Agzok is really going to struggle against mounted types of commanders. Uh, but again, some great tests here. You can see there are some best case scenarios. If you can use your most tanky troops with Agzok, I think he's going to have a solid chance of doing all right, but it does depend on who you're going up against. 
And if you're going up against good commanders, um, there are just certain ones that he's not going to do very, very well against. But that's going to do it for our video on Agsock. I really enjoy testing him out, and I think I wanted him to be a little bit better than he is. Again, if you had him at like crazy high levels of respect, there might be some additional builds you could look at doing that would have helped a little bit in those reports. Uh, but as you can see, even the ones where we got a draw or where we you know, were closer in terms of troop losses, um, I don't think it was going to be going to be changed that much by just a couple extra skill points. So I think Agzok is a solid commander. As a tier one commander, I think he's in the top half of the tier one commanders, but I think he's at the lower top half of tier one commanders. So I would still take someone like Gorbag or Grima or Khaldun over Agzok, uh, but there are ones that I would choose uh, after Agzok, if that makes sense. So if he's one of your only commanders and you're free to play, maybe you have Agzok and Ugthak, um, I would probably suggest going Agzok. Again, it also depends on the type of server you're in and what you're going up against. Uh, but that is going to be how you use Agzok and kind of his best case scenario. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that subscribe button to join our fellowship here on YouTube. And as always, I'll see you all in a future video. Uh -huh.